In this video, we're going to do an example of the, or how we calculate the DC or bias conditions for a BJT transistor where the base voltage is established by base resistors. So, as we've mentioned before, the, one of the differences in the analysis for the BJT transistors, um, different from the way we were analyzing MOSFET transistors, is that there is a base current, a finite base current going into the base here, whereas the gate current in the MOSFETs we assumed to be zero. So that makes it so that these two resistors here aren't strictly in series with each other. The current through this resistor is not the same as the current through this resistor because there's a finite current going into the base. Because they're not in series with each other, we can't just use a straightforward voltage divider to establish the base voltage. Our approach to doing this then is going to be to identify the feminine equivalent circuit for the biasing circuit being tied to positive 15 volts here, ground here, and we want to determine the feminine equivalent voltage from the base to ground. So looking back this way, we'll need the open circuit voltage and the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Now going back this way, the Thevenin voltage, and let's just go ahead and draw our Thevenin equivalent circuit. We'll have a Thevenin voltage, which is the open circuit voltage, and a Thevenin resistance. Looking back this way, open circuit, which means disconnected from this part of the circuit, the voltage will simply be the voltage across the 50k ohm resistor, in series with this 100 kilo ohm resistor. Again, it's open circuit. There's no current going this way. To get the Thevenin voltage, we need the open circuit voltage there. And V Thevenin is going to be the open circuit voltage, which is just the 15 times the 50K over the 150K. So that's one third of 15. The voltage there will be five volts. Now, similarly, we can get the Thevenin equivalent resistance by deactivating the source here effectively pulling this point to ground, we see that the Thevenin equivalent resistance there is just the 100K. Our Thevenin is equal to the 100 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the 50 kilo ohm resistor, and that gives us 33.3 kilo ohms. So 33.3 kilo ohm resistance there. So now we're going to redraw this circuit, replacing these two resistors and the biasing voltage here with a five kilo ohm re or a five volt source, so we're just going to tie it here to five volts. Coming down here is our 33 kilo ohm resistor, and now we connect the rest of the transistor circuit. We've got the three kilo ohm resistor here, going to ground. Coming up here still to 15, plus 15 volts here is the R sub C or five kilo ohm resistor. Now we're going to assume for calculation purposes that the base to emitter voltage, the DC base to emitter voltage, VBE, is going to be 0.7 volts. So plus to minus 0.7 volts there, and a beta of 100. Now we're going to assume that we're in the uh, active region, in the linear region wherein I sub C is equal to beta times I sub B, and I sub E is equal to beta plus 1 times I sub B. So if we can determine I sub B, then we can calculate the emitter resistance, or the emitter voltage, the collector voltage, and we'll also have the base voltage. Given the voltages there, we can calculate, uh, well, we can calculate everything we need once we know the base volt, uh, the base current here. So we'll do a KVL, if you will, starting at five volts and dropping down. Will be um, five volts going in the direction of I sub B will be a voltage drop. So minus 33.3 kilo ohms. We'll keep I sub B in milliamps. We'll use kilo ohms there. Drop down another tenth, uh, seven tenths of a volt, so minus 0.7, and then if this is I sub E, then we'll have minus 3k times I sub E, and that gets us down to our zero voltage reference. 
Now, we know that I sub E is equal to beta plus 1 I sub B, so we can rewrite this then as in bringing the 5 minus the 0.7 is a minus uh, four, is positive 4.3. We'll bring it to the other side as a negative 4.3. And then we have negative 33.3 I sub B minus 3 times I sub B, or I sub E rather, is beta plus 1 times I sub B. Beta is 100, so beta plus 1 would be 101 times I sub B, all equals a negative 4.3. Now we can get rid of the negative signs, and we have here 303 I sub B plus 33.3 I sub B is then equal to 336.3 I sub B, again dividing both sides by the negative, equals 4.3, or we get then that I sub B is equal to 12.77 microamps, or that's equivalent to 2.01277 milliamps. Now, I sub C is just beta I sub B, at least it is if we're in the saturation region, or in the uh, linear region, and we've assumed that. We haven't proved it yet, but we're well on our way to doing so. So in the linear region or the active region of the transistor, I sub C is just beta times I sub B. Beta is 100, I sub B is that. So that gives us 1.277 milliamps. While we're at it, let's just calculate I sub E. That's equal to beta plus 1 times I sub B. So 101 times that gives us 1.29 milliamps for the emitter current. So emitter current, 1.29 milliamps, collector current, 1.277 milliamps, and the base current, 0 0.01277 milliamps going into the base. With those, then, we can calculate that V sub C, the voltage at the collector, will be the 15 volts minus 5K times I sub C. I sub C was 1.277 milliamps. And that then gives us a value of V sub C equal to 8.61 volts. V sub E, while we're at it, is just the voltage here, which will be I sub E times 3K. And that turns out to be um, 1.29 milliamps times 3K, and that equals 3.87 volts. Now, we can calculate V sub B a couple of different ways. V sub B is the voltage at the base. It's 7 tenths of a volt above the emitter, so we can simply say then that V sub B is equal to V sub E plus the 0.7. That, that's a 0.7. That gives us 4.57 volts. So we now know each of the currents and voltages at each of the terminals of the transistor if it's in the active region. We know that it's in the active region if the PN junction between the base and the collector, or if the collector, the, I'm sorry, the base collector junction is still reverse biased. So we have V sub B at 4.5 volts. It's actually 4.57 volts, 4.57 volts. V sub C we have at 8.61 volts. So yes, the voltage, again, if we think of this as a, a PN junction there, the voltage here is significantly greater than the voltage there. This is still reverse biased. And so yes, our assumption that we were in the active region is correct, and these values here are correct also.